I want to uh, thank you for your incredible support also, because I just walked in the door and they told me I had the straw poll. Now I, I just come in, sir, you won the straw poll. I- 自离开白宫后，美国前总统川普在共和党中的支持率居高不下。八月六日，在德克萨斯州举行的保守派政治行动大会 （CPAC） 上，草根民调显示，在共和党二零二四年总统大选提名人问题上，川普获得了百分之六十九的支持率。排名第二的是佛罗里达州州长德桑蒂斯，获得了百分之二十四的支持率。德克萨斯州联邦参议员克鲁兹排名第三，获得百分之二的支持。Our country is being destroyed more from the inside than out. We have to seize this opportunity to deal with the radical left, socialist, lunatics, and fascists, and we have to hit them very, very hard. 来自休斯顿的金融顾问麦克比兰表示。他毫不怀疑，川普会在二零二四年总统大选中获胜。I think he would win, hundred percent. I don't think he's going to announce tonight. I'm not a very fan of his personality, but I'm very fan of his platform. Everything that he promised to us before he got elected. I support President Trump because he has done a lot for America. He puts America first. 截至目前，川普尚未正式宣布是否将在2024年再次竞选总统。不过，上个月，川普向媒体披露，他正在考虑是在11月中期选举之前还是之后宣布参加2024总统竞选。America's comeback begins this November, and it will continue onward with the unstoppable momentum that we're going to develop on November. 2024, because that's going to be. 新唐人电视台记者赵凤华综合报道。中共文工五克报复裴若曦访台。华尔街日报编委会七月二十九号文章认为，在中国经济疲软下，带有军国主义色彩的民族主义成为中共当局手中一张政治牌，以边缘战略将冲突升高到战争边缘，迫使对方屈服，以分散中国内部的注意力。毒是中共去这个混淆视听，他把反共呢变成反台独，是民主专制对决。大家得想清楚，不是什么虚假的什么中华民族主义，不是的。我不是反对民族主义，我只说中共讲的是假的，你不要上当。中共频频声称台湾是所谓以美谋独，混淆扩大所谓台独定义，包括中华民国也被台独。中共四天围台军演，学者宋国成分析对中共内部的影响之一。路上看到很多的这个小粉红啊，呃，如上考比的，呼天抢地的，呃，在做一种痛哭痛苦的这种表现。为什么？他觉得没有武统啊，只有那个武，没有的那个武武统，没有统一啊。今天如胡锡进啊、赵立坚等等这种人，我认为他才是真正的假爱国主义，甚至是一个民族的罪人。为什么？不断的用这一种高调，用这种语言。来给中国的人民百姓，叫做喂食民族主义的鸦片。当这个民众被长期喂食民族主义的鸦片的时候，他一旦没有这种鸦片和进食的时候，他就会处于一种衰弱状态。所以你要不断的喂食他，让他不断的产在一种很亢奋的状态。这种状态啊，其实呢，不仅是把中共政权带入到一个自我毁灭的绝的一种绝境。实际上，对中国人来讲，我认为也是一个很悲哀的情境。学者明居正多次提醒，中共重点分化台美关系，企图不战而胜，因为美国就是阻挡中共并吞台湾的主力。中共最近呢、啊，大力对台湾进行认知作战，抖音群组啊，大量传播假消息。目前传播方向有三个：第一呢，怀疑美国；嗯，第二，仇恨美国；第三呢，要跟美国分割，所以以美仇美分美。所以也请台湾的朋友呢，要特别想清楚，你在传的话或讲的事情呢，你是不是自觉不自觉帮中共在传话？《华尔街日报》五号社论指出，中共企图透过军演、二组外商投资台湾，美国应加快与台湾签署贸易协议，纾解中共对台湾的经济胁迫。新唐人亚利电视张东旭台湾台北报道。Enlian Partners estimates that about 10,000 wealthy Chinese people will emigrate to other countries this year, taking 48 billion dollars.
ET Chinese version cited experts saying this will create a social crisis in China. Explaining the reason for this phenomenon, China expert Tang Jingyuan told ET that the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is currently emphasizing the development of state-owned enterprises, so private enterprises are left behind. Tang said that the CCP's warrior diplomacy has made China increasingly isolated. Politically, the country is increasingly being North Koreanized. Economically, China is increasingly returning to a planned economic model. The situation makes the rich feel they have lost development space in China. Tang added that the CCP promotes common wealth. The power controlling China wants to use laws, taxes, and other tools to manage the wealth of the rich, including the middle class. As a result, China's entire rich and middle class feels unprecedented panic. They found that their assets were not secure. Tang believes that the CCP's zero-COVID policy of lockdowns as a basis for epidemic prevention and control was an important trigger for the wealthy Chinese to flee to foreign countries. Professor Xie Tian from the USC Aiken School of Business told ET that netizens in China estimated that at least 3,000 to 5,000 people fled Shanghai shortly after the city lifted the lockdown. Xie Tian explained that people fled Shanghai because they realized how fragile their fortunes were in the face of the CCP's power. With only an epidemic prevention policy, the controlling regime could deprive them of freedoms, basic livelihoods, and human rights. Tang Jingyuan analyzes that in the short term, the emigration of the rich will take a lot of wealth away from China in a very short period, directly impacting the foreign exchange system of China's controlling regime. In the medium term, when the flow of wealthy people fleeing China forms, the base of social wealth that mainlanders can share will decrease. With the massive transfer of wealth, investment, and employment opportunities for Chinese enterprises will also rapidly decrease. As a result, the gap between rich and poor in the world's most populous country will widen. In the long run, the brain drain from the rich will lead to a shortage of intellectual and innovative resources and the development of Chinese society will be significantly limited. Because of a new COVID-19 outbreak, the Chinese regime has semi-locked down the city of Yiwu in Zhejiang province, an important port and export center. ET, citing official data, reported that since the first new cases were recorded on August 2nd, COVID-19 has rapidly spread in Yiwu. On August 4th, the number of infected cases was 135. According to the authorities, Yiwu people are required to be tested for COVID-19. They are not allowed to enter or go out of residential areas without permission from authorities. The order also required only those with a negative test for COVID-19 within 24 hours to go to public places. Meanwhile, non-essential services, public transportation, and most tourist areas have all been closed in the city of 1.85 million people. Zhang Xiaofeng, a seller at the small commodity city in Yiwu, told ET, The outbreak this time is serious, and there are many confirmed cases in Jiangdong district. Most businesses in Yiwu small commodity city are temporarily shut down, and the economic loss is huge. Dining in is prohibited, but takeaways are still allowed, for now. Yiwu city has been the world's largest wholesale hub for many years. In addition, this city, located in the east of China, is an important port and export center for various small commodities worldwide. According to ET, more than 2 million small and medium-sized enterprises in mainland China have business activities related to Yiwu. The Chinese regime's decision to continue applying a zero-COVID policy, with a lockdown as the basis, to Yiwu raises concerns that supply chains, especially for small commodities, will be seriously hurt. Chinese-language media Xintang Ren reported on August 5th that a group of employees from a medical supply company in Jingmen, Hubei province, had been poisoned. One person died of a sudden myocardial infection, while at least 43 others had ab abnormal signs. The rest of the staff is still being treated in the hospital. According to CCTV News, on July 31st, three employees of Ogilvy & Mather, Jingmen Medical Supplies Company Limited, working in the Wet Wipes Workshop, were admitted to the First People's Hospital in Jingmen with abnormal liver functions and other indicators. On July 5th, Ogilvy announced that some employees of its subsidiary, Jingmen Ogilvy, felt physically unwell and were diagnosed with poisoning. According to analysis, the Wet Wipes Workshop workers were poisoned after inhaling harmful compounds found in the glue used to seal the boxes. 
The glue is a product customized by Jingman Ogilvy for specific customers and packaged in PET plastic boxes. The announcement also stated that PET glue was only used in the outer packaging of customized products made for specific clients and that the production process involved a contract amount of about $330,000. The Southern Metropolis Daily quoted Mr. Zhang, one of the poisoned employees, Now the main reason is said to be that the glue is poisonous, causes abnormal liver function. Mr. Zhang recalled that a week earlier he had experienced symptoms including a cold, vomiting, and diarrhea. He said, about 10 days ago, there were people around me who couldn't eat and went to the hospital to find out why. The doctor said it may be related to work. Regarding the workplace, Mr. Zhang said that although he typically complies with regulations to wear one-piece suits, masks, and shoe covers, the workshop where he is located is crowded, unventilated, and small. Tetrachloroethane, the poisonous compound in the glue, is a colorless liquid with a chloroform-like odor. It has anesthetic and depressant effects on the central nervous system and could cause liver, kidney, and myocardial damage. The symptoms of acute and subacute poisoning are neurological and gastrointestinal. There could be ascites, jaundice, hepatomegaly, vomiting, loss of appetite, and stomach pain. Long-term inhalation may result in liver function damage, multiple nerve damage, weakness, headaches, insomnia, constipation, or diarrhea. Since 2008, Ogilvy Medical has retained its position as the top exporter of medical apparel in China. As of August 5th, Ogilvy Medical's stock price closed at about $2, down 2.1%, with a total market value of about $1.181 billion. 